let's talk about attributes. Where have you heard that word before? Maybe you've heard it to describe something. Today we're going to be talking about attributes as they relate to geometrical shapes. Attributes are a feature or characteristic that can be used to describe an object. There's a couple of different ways that we can think about attributes. First, we can think about it as mathematical versus non-mathematical attributes. We could also think of attributes as defining versus non-defining. Lastly, we could think of attributes as measurable versus non-measurable. Let's take a look at an attribute of, say, the thin red hexagon. What would be some mathematical attributes for this thin red hexagon? If you said that it has six sides, you would be correct. That's a mathematical attribute. Think about another mathematical attribute for that thin red hexagon. Here's a hint. How about the angles? What do you know about them? They are all obtuse angles. You are correct. All hexagons have six obtuse angles. That would be a mathematical attribute. There's one more I can easily think of. How about the vertices, that place where the two sides meet, right? How many vertices does a hexagon have? Six, you're right. Now let's think of some non-mathematical attributes. How about color? This is a thin red hexagon, so red would be a non-mathematical attribute. Can you think of another one? Let me give you a hint. When I say thin, that would be a non-mathematical attribute. I didn't specify whether we were using the large or the small thin red hexagon, but if I had, and you'll notice that in your attribute blocks there is large and small of each one, if I had, that would also be a non-mathematical attribute. Let's say it's large, so I'm going to write that one down as well. Now something that you should know if you've ever touched actual attribute blocks, they can be made out of either plastic or foam. That would be another non-mathematical attribute. Obviously if you're using the virtual manipulatives, you won't have that factor, but something to consider. Now that we've talked about mathematical versus non-mathematical attributes, let's talk about attribute trains. One difference attribute trains. Now, if you're wondering, wait a second, where did the trains come from? All right, we like to call them trains because we're gonna put them all in a row, okay? So you didn't miss anything, that's where trains coming from. So let's start with, um, we're gonna call this the large, thin, red rectangle. A one difference attribute train means that I want you to change just one thing to put the next block right next to it. So let's think about what one thing could we change? Well, I could change the color, right? So let's try that. I'm going to make a blue large rectangle. Now, I want you to think about, could I throw on here the yellow large circle? Think about that for a second. How many attributes did I change? Well, if it's yellow, there's one. I changed the color, right? It's large still, so are these, so I didn't change that, but did I change my shape? So that would be a two difference attribute train. Remember, I only want one difference attribute trains. What about a large blue circle? Would that work? Yeah, I'm only changing the shape, right? It's still large and I still have the same color. Can you think of another one? I think this time I wanna change the color. What if I do a large yellow circle? Again, I'm only changing the color, one difference, attribute train. So I could put that next. If you're thinking that there's more than one answer to this, you would be absolutely correct. Keep going and why don't you try adding on four more shapes that would all be aboard the one attribute train. Choo choo! If you're having fun right now, please stop. Math is not supposed to be fun. I do love attribute trains though. Here are my shapes. Again, yours are probably gonna look different than mine and that's okay. You can see that I changed, this went from large to small. Then I kept it yellow and small, went to triangle. I changed my shape. I kept it small, changed my color, went to a small red triangle, kept my color, kept my size, went to a small 
red square. This would be an example of a one difference attribute train. Let's look at a two difference attribute train. This time we want to change two attributes. I'm going to start with the, we're going to call this the small blue thin hexagon. And again, thin versus thick on your manipulatives means something when I'm drawing them in two dimensions. It's not exactly helpful. So let's leave thin versus thick aside for a moment. So let's call this the small blue hexagon. I want you to change two attributes this time around. Go ahead and give it a shot. For me, I'm going to change the color and the shape. So I think I'm going to do a small yellow square. Let's just double check that I changed two attributes. I changed my color, I changed my shape. Two attributes, perfect. What if I said a large red rectangle? Would that still be able to ride the two difference train? Again, that was the large red rectangle. Think about that for a moment. Large, first of all, this was small, remember. Red, I changed a color, there's two things. And rectangle, I changed three things. So a large red rectangle would be a three difference train, not the two difference train. What if I did a large yellow circle? Would that be a change in two attributes? Change of shape, change of size, same color, it would. So a large yellow circle would work. Think about what the next three shapes would be. I'll give you a minute to try it on your own. Remember, there's a lot of different options with these, but here's an example. Again, I went from the large yellow circle to the small red, so I changed those two circle. Then I went to a large, small to large, there's one, and hexagon, kept the same color, also two differences. Then I'm going from the large red hexagon to the large, didn't change that one, but blue triangle. So you can see I could keep going. We could do this with three differences, four differences, you get the picture. These are the attribute trains. I hope that you now have a better understanding of what we mean when we talk about attributes and start thinking about what are the attributes for the different geometrical shapes that we're going to be talking about in the future modules. I hope you found this video helpful and you now have a better understanding of attributes and attribute trains and you can better reflect on what the different attributes are of the different mathematical shapes that we're going to encounter together.